What's going on everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Brad and this video is going to be about three main ways you can incorporate more reading into your lifestyle easily. If you're struggling to force yourself to read or you're just the type of person who doesn't read that much, this video is one for you. So if you're anything like me then getting yourself to sit down and read a book is quite a chore, it's quite difficult and reading is one of them things that we all know it's something that we all should be doing more of. So if you found this video then you probably already understand the importance of reading, you're just trying to look for new ways to force yourself to sit down and actually start reading more. But for anyone else wondering what the importance of it is or what the relevance of it is in terms of uh, self-help or self-development. Basically, reading more will help you in a lot of different ways. But for me, the best things that I took from reading were when I was in uni, reading more actually helped me write better. So in terms of just structuring longer, more coherent sentences and paragraphs and learning new vocabulary and stuff like that, just reading more complex uh, texts, soaking that dialogue in and transferring that over to what I was writing as well for like essays and stuff, that really helped. It's kind of like if you're hanging around with a new person, go on holiday together or move into a house together at uni and you start to spend a lot more time with this person, you start to realise that some of the words you use are actually words that they use and vice versa so they start to sound more like you, you start to sound more like them. I don't know if that's just me and I'm just weird but you start to sound like the people who you hang around with. So that's why if you're in uni or you're in school, reading the great writings of other people is the best way to make your own writing better because you sort of soak that up and it comes out in what you write as well. So, And other than that, for anyone who's not in education, it, reading is just a great thing anyway because there's always something more you can learn in any area that you're interested in. So reading books is the best way to soak up that knowledge and be able to have better conversations with the people that you know that are interested in similar things. One last reason why reading is just good generally in life is because it's a really easy way to fill in those gaps of time that you have in between certain things that you're doing during the day which stops you from just constantly picking up your phone and checking social media. If you're like a lot of people now they're trying to spend less time on social media and be more present in life and enjoy other things rather than just being stuck to a phone because when you see that screen time notification pop up once a week on your iPhone and it says you've been on your phone for like 11 hours this week or whatever I've seen some crazy numbers and a lot of people that I've spoken to have tried really hard to just stop being so addicted to the phone, deleted their social media apps off the phone and stuff like that just to spend less time just scrolling through endless social media posts that they don't even really care about. To do that, you've got to have something to substitute with scrolling through your phone and having a book handy or um, having something to read is an amazing way to do that. So it's healthy, you're learning, you're growing, and that's what this channel is all about, learning, growing as a person. So yeah, I wanted to give three ways that I managed to force myself to read more books, which helped me start more things, learn more things, give me the confidence to grow in different ways. So the first way, which I figured out helped me read more books, was kind of a cheat because I'm not literally reading more books i'm just listening to more books but i'm still taking in the information and that's through audible honestly there's only a handful of books that i've ever read from cover to cover like actual physical books and that's because like reading has always just been a chore for me i don't know what it is i don't know if it's because i grew up in this like technology age where we're just we've got short attention spans and we can't concentrate on anything for long enough to actually read a book or even a chapter of a book but there's only a few books and they're the ones i've been really really into and probably just like fictional books that i've actually read from cover to cover and completed the whole thing over the past couple of years i've actually read tons and tons of books and that's because i just figured out a, like a cheat this easier way to take in the same information and that's through an app called audible reading has always sort of been something that's been a chore to me but when it comes to conversations about good books or like biographies of celebrities that i like or entrepreneurs or business books i've always got something to say i never feel like left out of the loop and that's because i've been able to take in the information an easier way and that's through listening to them on audible so if you don't know what audible is basically it's part of amazon and it's a subscription-based audiobook service i've been a member of audible since like 2013 I think. So basically how it works is you pay around £7 a month and you get one credit each month to buy any book that Audible has no matter the price. You can go on Audible and just buy the book with cash. You don't have to sign up to the subscription service. It's crazy because some books are like £5 and some are like £50 that you can buy with one credit. For example, the Sherlock Holmes collection which is read by Stephen Fry is a really popular book on Audible and it's like some crazy amount of hours long. How, how many hours is it? So it's 62 hours and 52 minutes. Most of the books that I get 
they're like a 10 to 15 hour average but 62 hours of content that's like a, a load of sherlock holmes books put into one and you can just buy that with one credit which costs seven pounds it's pretty good the way they do it if you bought this book it would be like i think it's like 70 pounds but you can still buy it without one credit so it's definitely worth going and doing the subscription service if you want to try audible it's not like an ongoing contract so you can just cancel at any time and you won't pay the next payment you won't get another credit it just stops you keep the books that you've already paid for and you can still listen to them after your subscription stops i can honestly say that this is the one thing that's allowed me to read so many books over the past few years and without this i wouldn't read a fraction of the amount of books that i actually do and i'm able to have conversations about and share the knowledge of other people from these books and even though i'm not like technically reading i'm just um, listening to it like it's a podcast or a conversation that somebody's having i'm still taking in the information sometimes it's even better because it's more conversational and natural sometimes the actual author of the book will be the narrator as well so if it's a, an autobiography or someone that you follow or a business leader or something you will recognize their voice and they will be the person reading the whole book so that's pretty cool when that happens as well and the best thing about audible is it's so easy it's just like putting music on when you're going for a walk or you're going for a run or you're going in the car or you're going to the gym any of those times where you're listening to music you could just put on this audiobook and you're doing two things at once most times walking running in the car driving somewhere all these sorts of different uh, situations audible and uh, like podcasts and stuff they're just the best thing by the way if you want a free one month trial of audible you can click the link in the description and it'll take you over to audible put your details in uh, sign up for a free one month trial get your credit buy any book on there uh, listen to the whole book if you want to uh, cancel it after that you just go into your account cancel it you won't pay anything and that's fine you've had your free trial there's literally no reason not to do it if you're watching this video and you're interested in reading more or there's a book that you've been thinking that you wanted to read or something just go and try the free trial of audible download it onto your phone and then just listen to it in your spare time so the second way you can make it really easy to read more books is by removing any barriers that are in the way of you actually reading books what i mean by this is don't try to read a book on your phone I know they, the Apple has books and on Android you can get like the Kindle app and stuff like that. Just don't try and read books on your phone because the temptation is too strong to just change app and go to Instagram or go to Facebook or go to TikTok or whatever it is that you want to go to. And in your, if you're in the middle of a page or a sentence in a book and then you get a notification that pops up from one of your friends who's sending you a video of something funny and it's just like you're never going to be able to read on your phone. Don't try that. If you're going to try and actually read on any sort of device, Kindles are really good, but you can also get like a cheap version of a Kindle. Um, I've got this one here, which is just sitting at the bed. This was given to me by my cousin and um, I use it all the time it's amazing it's called books that's b-o-o-x I'm not quite sure what the company is oh it's onyx the company is onyx I know there's loads of them out there you can go and get a cheaper version of a kindle they're really easy to download loads of books onto and that will allow you to leave your phone in a different room or leave your phone turned off or in, in a drawer and then just focus on reading for a little bit and have no distractions. So another way you can remove friction from wanting to read books and reading books is by getting a book that you like or getting your little e-reader that you've got or whatever it is and putting it next to your bed so you can like read just like 10 minutes before you go to bed. You know, before I go to bed tonight, I'm going to read like 10 pages or a chapter or whatever it is. If the book is hidden away at the back of a drawer or in a box underneath the bed, then you're never going to read it. There's too many things that you've got to go through in order to get the book and you'll just talk yourself out of it. You've got to make it really easy for yourself by putting it near your bed or putting it in a bag that you carry around all day every day. You find these little snippets of time in between doing different things like sitting on the bus or sitting on a train or, or like waiting in a waiting room where you can pick up the book if it's if it's if there's no friction in between you wanting to read and you're actually reading like it's already in your bag you're already carrying it around with you then you'll, you'll it'll make it really easy for you to read more so the third and final way that you can read more easier is by starting with what you love so if the reason you want to read more is because you're in uni and you want to learn more about medicine or law or whatever it is that you're studying or you're not in uni you just want to learn more about a certain fields like technology or science or entrepreneurship or business what you should focus on is not that area that you want to learn about but first focus on developing this love for reading in the first place and you do that by picking up something which is just gonna hook you because you already love that thing so for most people starting with fiction starting with stories that's what takes you right back to when you were a child and you used to love these stories and reading books anyway that's the most natural thing that people usually go back to but some people have a natural love for history or other topics so just 
Find what it is that you already love. Could be gaming, could be like cooking, it could be anything. Choose something that you love. Find a book on that first. For most, like I said, for me, it was fiction. Start to read these fiction books. Develop the habit of reading every single day. And eventually, you'll start to get like a thirst for something more challenging or something that gives you a bit more knowledge. Maybe you'll go from some fiction books to like non-fiction. You're going to self-help or science or maths or law or medicine or whatever it is. And then eventually you would have developed the habit of reading and you can apply that to the actual field that you, or the area that you want to um, read and develop knowledge from in order to have better conversations, have more knowledge to take into the workplace or take into university and be a more well-rounded, more knowledgeable person. So yeah, that's the three main ways that I think you can incorporate more reading into your lifestyle in a much easier way. Like I said, if you want a free trial of Audible, which is where I would start, it's the main thing that's helped me read um, loads of books over the past few years. Go to the description and click the link that'll take you through to Audible. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel and I'll see you in the next one.